and welcome back, thrivers and truth seekers from all over the world. I'm looking in the chat and there are people from just about everywhere that there's still any kind of light on the planet. I, I'm talking about daylight. Uh, and even from some who are in the dead of night. So thank you so much for taking the time and engaging in this conversation. I want to start off by just sharing my screen and aligning once more on the purpose for our gatherings here. So the purpose of the Thrive Freedom Portal is to provide an interactive communication opening with humanity through which productive explorations, and that's going to be one of those today, <laughs> compelling media and effective actions, and we're really going to focus on that today, can be shared to help guide us to truly thrive. Now, there are those on the planet who have a very different idea of what we should be doing. And I saw the cover of The Economist magazine, which is a globalist economics journal uh, owned mostly by the Rothschilds, I gather. And this is the light at the end of their tunnel. <clears throat> the darkness that we are going through, they see a light at the end of that tunnel that is represented by a hypodermic. Well, I agree that there's light at the end of the rabbit hole. And we're gonna see a lot of that in this discussion today. But my idea of what the light at the end of that rabbit hole is, is very different from what would be represented by a hypodermic. So today is the Worldview Pioneer series. And this is where we gather cutting edge experts on the topic that we're most focused on, usually for a month. And this is, we're coming to the end of the COVID month. Of course, we'll be dealing with COVID, unfortunately, for quite a while, but we've really taken a deep dive on many levels. We've done our seven levels deep. We've done the open Q&A. And now today uh, is super exciting for me because talk about cutting edge experts. We have three of my real global heroes on today. And they are heroes for their brilliance. They are heroes of mine for their courage, what they're willing to do what they're, with their brilliance. And then they're heroes for me because of their perseverance. The stories behind each one of these amazing human beings, I hope we can get into that a little bit because it, it's one of the things that keeps the wind under the wings for Kimberly and me and our team is people like this out there doing what they're doing despite a uh, really brutal suppression on virtually every level. So I, I wanna uh, bring on the first of our guests uh, and introduce you to Del Bigtree. So Leandra, if you can bring Del on so that we can see him too, while I'm talking a little bit about him, then we can actually see him blush. Well, I'm going to talk about it. So officially, Dell is one of the, of the preeminent voices of the vaccine risk awareness movement. His career as an Emmy award-winning producer of the CBS talk show, The Doctors, changed abruptly, and that's an understatement, when he produced the documentary Vaxxed, and then later Vaxxed 2, which are credited, credited with igniting a revolution against pharmaceutical tyranny around the world. And I can tell you that um, Vax One for me was a, as much as I had studied vaccines, Vax, Vax One shook me to the core. And frankly, Vax Two, I wept most of the way through that movie. I don't know of a more powerful documentary that I've ever seen. So this guy is a, uh, a film wizard. Uh, he's an amazing activist and, and truth seeker. So Dell, welcome. Thanks for taking the time to come on with us today. Thank you for having me, Foster. It's a pleasure. 
All right. Well, we'll get into it in a moment. Uh, but next, I want to introduce uh, Dr. David E. Martin, a longtime friend and colleague. And he's the founder and chairman of MCAM Incorporated. No one is entirely sure what this organization does. <laughs> but uh, officially, it's the, it's the international leader in innovation finance, trade, and intangible asset finance. So that'll clear that up for you. So David is a speaker, is an author, he's a business executive and a futurist, and his work has been engaged in every country on earth. He was recently featured in Plandemic 2, Indoctrination, and expertly followed the money to expose the agenda behind the vaccines. His work has been the subject of two international awarded documentaries, uh, Patent Wars was the first one, which highlights his work on reform of the global innovation system, uh, and Future Dreaming, a conversation with David Martin, which is a dialogue about humanity and its optimal interaction in the universe. So David, welcome. Great to be here. Thank you, Foster. Really good to have you on. And David is sporting the bow tie. This, I, was, I was kidding him before, this bow tie has appeared on most of the major media around the world. This is one of his uh, super weapons. Um, that <laughs> he puts it on and amazing things happen that very few other people could pull off. So thanks for bringing your bow tie you today. You're most welcome, always, always prepared. <laughs> and uh, next I wanna introduce Dr. Robert Young. Many of you will recognize him from uh, as being one of the stars of Thrive 2. And one of the reasons he was a star of Thrive Two is that over the past two and a half decades, Robert Young has been widely recognized as one of the top research and clinical scientists in the world. Throughout his career, his research has been focused at the cellular level. This guy has spent a lifetime looking through a microscope, thank goodness for the rest of us. So having a specialty in cellular nutrition, biochemistry mm -hmm. and microbiology, Dr. Young has devoted his life to researching the true causes of so-called disease and subsequently developing what he calls the new biology in order to help people balance their life. His knowledge, his techniques, and his supplements have supported hundreds of people in curing themselves. Now, this is I'm saying this. He's not claiming this. I'm saying that this is my observation <laughs> with a lot of evidence that these offerings of his have supported hundreds of people, as we featured in Thrive 2, in curing themselves from cancer, chronic fatigue, diabetes, heart disease, and more. So Robert, thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, it's uh, indeed a pleasure, uh, Foster. I uh, always love to see your uh, countenance and your, your shining face, and uh, uh, it's just wonderful to be here. So thank you for having me on today. Uh, Thank you so much. And I'll start with you in just a moment, but just to give people an overview, the plan for today's session is, uh, first of all, I have asked these gentlemen, each of whom could talk for eight hours and it would be compelling and important all the way through. I've asked them to, to an, an initially give us a 10 minute truth drop. <laughs> that, that's a challenge for any of us. And, and we'll start with that because in my decades of activism, I have found the single most important thing is finding the truth. What is the seed truth that is being covered up with a big lie? So I'm asking them each to address the in their particular areas of expertise. Then I'm going to kind of summarize that uh, a little bit and set up a solutions brainstorm. This is a spontaneous roundtable uh, that we're inviting you all in on where the four of us are just going to brainstorm what is the best use of us? How can we collaborate to effectively participate with other activists worldwide to actually get rid of this uh, COVID fiasco and the agenda behind it that it represents? So we'll do that brainstorm and then we'll open it up to a Q&A with you. Now you guys have been sending in fantastic questions all week and I know we'll have a lot in the chat and in the particularly put your questions in the Q&A and we'll be rounding those up too and passing them on to these experts while they're here. Then at the end we'll have some announcements about uh, upcoming uh, events and opportunities for for each one of us and then we'll close it out. Okay so um, 
I said that I am most dedicated to finding the core truth. And that's where the scientific method comes in really handy. The scientific method has been virtually taught out of most schools, even in some of the sciences. But in the scientific method, you know, what you do is you come up with a hypothesis and then you test, you, you experiment, you do all sorts of tests to see how does the hypothesis hold up. And you have to define your terms going in. And then, then you co collect your data and you look at the data and see, does it match up with your hypothesis? And if it doesn't, you need to alter or drop your hypothesis. Mm -hmm. And then you need to come to new conclusions and then test that. And then in relation to activism, and particularly the COVID that we're going to focus on today, but of course it ties into economics and media and the, the whole global agenda that we, we're all exploring. Once you get accurate con conclusions where your hypothesis is proven out by the data, then you can take effective legal action and mass actions and actually move into individual uh, action and then collaboration and actually solve the problem as we've laid out in the arc of the seven levels deep. So I'm, I'm, I've asked Robert to begin by taking about ten, uh, 10 minutes and sharing in response to my question to him was, what is the corona effect really? What are the, what's the source? What are the symptoms? And what's this, the, the contagion related to it? I've asked him to hold off on solutions for later on when we get into that. But Robert, please take it away for, for your most succinct version of what the heck is really going on with the actual corona effect. Well, thank you, Foster. Uh a quote comes to mind uh, from Albert Einstein, who said, if you cannot explain it simply, then you just don't know what you're talking about. So I'm going to try to keep it as simple as, as possible. You did also mention defining terms. So if you, if you take the word and break it apart, coronavirus, corona means crowning. And, uh, and so what happens, I'm going to show you some specific uh, micrographs or pictures using my methodology of phase and bright field microscopy, as well as uh, electron microscopy. So you can actually see these uh, uh, micrographs or pictures of what this crowning effect is. And this is something that is born within us. Uh, and it's based upon, uh, based upon a theory uh, that uh, is not, uh, it's in dichotomy to the germ theory. The germ theory is the etiology there is that germs cause disease in the form of an infection coming from the outside world into the inside world, causing a physical disturbance. The hypothesis with the terrain theory is that the human body has a very delicate pH balance, and that pH balance is an alkaline balance. The second part of that hypothesis is that sickness, sickness and disease is due to an expression of that imbalance. And that imbalance is caused by what we eat, what we drink, what we breathe, uh, even what we think, what we feel, and what we believe. So we are, we are the cause of our sickness and diseases, and we also are the cure for our sickness and diseases. So I'd like to introduce to you uh, the term corona, which means crowning, virus, which means poison, and a whole different uh, pathology that corona is an effect and not from an infection agent coming from the outside world in, but being expressed from the inside out due to a compromised environment. Now you can actually see the evidence of this in the macro world when you look at the forests of Denali, or if you see the deterioration of the coral reefs off the coast of Australia, uh, the Gold Coast. This is happening because the ocean is absorbing air pollution, toxins, carbon monoxide, titanium dioxide, uh, hydrogen uh, cyanide. And, and in doing that, the pH of the ocean is dropping. We're also putting millions of tons of pollution within that environment. And so one of my most important, uh, I, I think, simplified way to understand this is what I call the fishbowl metaphor. And the fishbowl metaphor starts with a question. And the question is this, if the fish is sick, what would you do? Think carefully. Would you treat the fish 
or would you change the environment in which the fish is living in? In other words, the environment which it, it, it swims in. And nine out of 10 times or more, uh, the logical common sense answer is the fish is only as healthy as the environment it's swimming in. And so that is controlled by a, by a delicate pH balance or chemistry. I'd like to show you what happens. You look at the picture behind me, which is, is actually a micrograph of my own blood showing cells, these cells are red blood cells, which are even in color, even in shape, even in size. They're not sticking together. But when that environment becomes polluted, I would like to show you the evolution of cellular deterioration or membrane deterioration and also genetic mo uh, modification, which then becomes an additional pollution to our solutions uh, within. So I'd like to share right now uh, some of these, uh, let's see if I can uh, do that now. So we'll share here, let me get my, uh, So when we're looking at when we're looking at blood, we're looking at cells which carry a charge. They repel each other because of that negative charge. This becomes compromised. It becomes compromised by pollution within our solutions from what we eat, what we drink, and what we breathe. It's not an infection. What happens is the cells begin to break down as an outfection coming from the inside out. So we see in this next micrograph, we actually see under phase contrast, a condition where cells after they lose their negative electric charge, and as the pollution becomes more prominent within those solutions, cells begin to chain together. This deteriorates from pollution that comes from within. Now here you see a black crystal. This, this is black carbon, which is coming from air pollution. It's causing a disturbance within the cell. And this is significant because as this pollution within the solutions of our body, particularly the vascular and the interstitial fluids, we then see the breakdown of the cell or the cell membranes giving the crowning effect. Let's see if I can go ahead and, and uh, raise Sorry, that. Sorry, I interrupt you, Dr. Young. Can you uh, go full screen, please? Yeah, let's, let's see. I'll, I'll have to go back because I think I've got the wrong screen here, but let me, let me see if we can do this. Let me know if you see this or not, okay? But here you see the crowning effect of the red blood cells. Now, bottom line, can you see this? Are you yes, seeing that, this picture? That, that looks good, that's full screen now. Okay, so what you're looking at is cellular membrane deterioration due to the environment of which these cells are found on. This is not caused by by an infectious agent. It's caused by pollution that comes from water, from food, from air, even our feelings and what we think pollutes, pollutes our internal fluids. I, I call it uh, when it ends up as a heart attack is a thought attack. So these waste products have a deteriorating uh, factor within the membranes of the cells. Uh, Dr. James uh, uh, Hildreth proposed that this so-called phantom virus is fully an exosome. But what happens when cells begin to deteriorate, use, showing under an electron microscope, we see the birth of what is called an exosome. Exosome is a protein that's released in order to pre prevent internal bleeding, in order to protect the internal environment. So since life and death begins in the blood and the blood never lies, when we look at COVID, you'll notice that it's identical to an exosome. An exosome, any scientist in the world knows that exosomes are not coming from the outside world. They're actually being born within us and from us. Now, as a defensive mechanism against cellular breakdown due to a compromised internal environment, the pH of the fluids are deteriorating. And what happens is that deterioration takes place it destroys the cover or the protective coating of our lining of our arteries and veins, which activates the clotting factors. Now I wrote about this. What are the causes of oxygen deprivation within the blood? 
associated with SARS, which is stands for a severe acute respiratory syndrome. I have now described the pathology of what is actually happening associated with this corona effect. So what we see then are bronchioles are affected and how they're affected by the interstitial fluids or the environment that surrounds, the largest body of water that surrounds every cell in the human body. Now this interstitial fluid, uh, the organ is called, that contains this fluid is called the interstitium. And the interstitium is the largest organ of the body which controls uh, that environment and pushes waste from its environment out into the lymphatic system to be eliminated through the four channels of elimination, perspiration, urination, respiration and defecation. So this environment, this contrast between the terrain theory, when we have an, a polluted internal environment, our cells begin to suffocate. The, the electrical charge changes, the membrane begins to deteriorate. From that deterioration becomes these crowning effect. And from that deterioration, the body then releases from the cells exosomes to begin the prevention of internal bleeding and deterioration by activating the clotting factors to prevent what is called disseminated intravascular coagulation. But what is happening is the body can no longer deliver its waste into the alveoli, into cannot enter the pulmonary system because when cells are stacked together, they can't go into the pul pulmonary system. It has to go in single file. So what then happens is a clotting effect associated with blood clots. And these clots are showing up in all autopsies in every organ of the human body. So because the body can't release, it, release its waste through respiration, we end up with the symptoms of hypoxia. Now these common sy symptoms are fever, dry cough, and fatigue. And these common symptoms, particularly in the elderly, which is, which is the mortality on that over 70% of our elderly are dying because they can't release their waste products. Not because they've been infected by something, because there is no corona virus. There is just a corona effect leading to symptoms. So what happens in the hospitals, what happens in the daycare centers, uh, the, the rest homes, uh, the, the elderly are affected by this because they can't release their carbon dioxide. And if you can't release your carbonic acid or carbon dioxide, you go into hypoxia, you go into intravascular, uh, uh, interstitial and uh, vascular coagulation or pathological coagulation. And these symptoms are nothing more than the body trying to force waste out through the pores of the skin. So the fever, is the expulsion, listen to this carefully, the fever and the body's increase in temperature is natural. The body increases a natural fever to move waste out through the pores of the skin through sweating. That is the largest elimination of the organ of the body. When you suppress the fever, you actually end up killing the patient. So the fever is the forced expulsion of waste that comes from the intra, intra, intracellular, which is the fluids of the cells, the waste products from metabolism, from the vascular acids that are being dumped into the interstitium organ, the body has to get rid of this. If it doesn't, the person dies. And so death is not due to a virus, it's due to pathological blood coagulation but, and the symptoms uh, of various acidic contributing factors which lead to hypoxia and then disseminated intravascular coagulation is why we're finding clots in all autopsies of those who have died who have passed from this phantom not existing virus called COVID. So Ro why Robert, would we give, Ro yeah, so Robert, that's really the summation of what I'm talking about here. Yeah, and I especially want you to just briefly address what is the contagion? Since there isn't, a, you're saying that there isn't a, like a bug flying around trying to eat us up or something like that. Okay, what so is the, the, the yeah, contagious so the, effect. Yeah, so the contagious is the illusion. There is nothing contagious. Germs in of themselves do not 
do not cause disease. Seeds do not grow unless they're put in a proper environment. So seeds become plants when they find themselves in soil. Without soil, there's, there's no development of the plant. Germs are nothing more than biological breakdown products called, called endotoxins, or they are DNA or RNA remnants from your own body cells or from the food that you're eating. The body has to clear that out. So the infection is, is the, the illusion. The actual solution to the pollution then is understanding that this is an outfection coming from the inside out. And exosomes are not the virus. In fact, they are actually good guys, not bad guys in protecting the body and trying to get out. And all of the symptoms from the fever to the dry cough is the body trying to expel waste products that are building up in the largest organ of the human body. That's the interstitium, uh, uh, the interstitial fluids, which holds the interstitial fluids, which surround every cell. Your cells are polluted, like in the picture here on the right. You see the disorganization and the crowning effect of a cell right here in the center on the right. You see the corrugated berry shapes coming forward. This is an environmental problem, not a viral problem. The only- so, so do human beings slough off these exosomes in such a way that people around them, if they're not healthy, could get the infection? Or they, they can they can be a contributing factor, but it's so minute with with the, the the way that the body's set up, particularly the stomach, which is on the front line of immunity. The stomach produces sodium bicarbonate to neutralize these incoming acidic contributing factors. I call them acidic contributing environmental factors because that's all they are is contributing factors. If I go into a polluted environment, a smoke filled room my body's going to try to expel that. It's a force expulsion of toxicity that I've breathed within, okay? If I continue to stay in that environment, that could hamper general respiratory uh, and circ blood circulation that could lead to hypoxia, that could lead to carbon dioxide poisoning. But the poisoning is multifaceted, but we have to get off this idea that virologies and viruses actually exist. They don't exist. They only exist as a concept on a piece of paper. There mm -hmm. are no viruses. And all of the testing is another subject, which I'm not gonna cover right now, which is RT-PCR testing. It totally makes any sort of vaccine totally mute in, 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 in the reality that all you're doing is providing an experiment to see if you can survive the pollutions within that biological and chemical that are being pushed into the vascular system, which the vascular system then pushes, pushes those toxic elements within that vaccine to the interstitium or the interstitial fluids, and then you create the corona effect. Then you create the cell membrane deterioration. Then you create the genetic mutations. And then the public at large is confused. They believe the media, they believe you know, the pharmaceutical companies, but there's no science proving the yeah. efficacy of a single infection. HIV, Ebola, the Hunter virus, the SARS viruses, they are all a figment of imagination and a, a muse for a much larger agenda uh, that I think we're gonna be talking about. But it has nothing to do with the virus. It has to, how do you protect the internal environment of your body? How do you maintain its pristine, its cleanliness? This is a environmental problem, not a viral problem. I want to make that perfectly clear. Okay, but, great. I think that, that's a great place to wrap up for this first segment. Thank you so much for, for covering so much very succinctly. I appreciate that. Okay, um, let's go on to uh, David Martin. So what I've asked David to do is to answer the question, 
what are your three most important investigative discoveries about COVID? So David, please take it away. Well, uh, following Robert's comments, I think it's really important on this entire conversation to have a fundamental agreement that we are trapped in many respects in a belief system and in a linguistic system. And I think it's very important to, uh, to understand my comments over the next 10 minutes are gonna focus very specifically on an investigation into the inquiry that we began in 1998. And you heard the date correctly. In 1998, we were very concerned with the growing funding for the bioweaponization of protein and internally produced protein fragments. Hi, I'm Drew Freeman from the Thrive On team. Thanks for watching part one of the show. You can tell Dr. Martin is just getting rolling here, and he's just about to lay out some extremely well-researched revelations about the origins of the pandemic that'll knock your socks off. In part two, you'll hear Del Bigtree's take on the pandemic, and after that, Foster leads a spicy hour-long roundtable discussion between the three, Dr. Young, Del Bigtree, and Dr. Martin, that you won't want to miss. Signing up for your free trial only takes a few minutes. Just click on the link in the description of this video. This will take you to this Freedom Portal page that you're seeing now for the show. Once you get there, just click on Get Access Now. From here, you'll enter your name, your email address, and a password. Be sure to click on the legalese checkbox. And then also don't forget to click on the second checkbox so you receive our weekly newsletter and notifications of upcoming shows and events. You can sign up monthly, annually, if you wanna be a really strong supporter and meet with Foster once a quarter, you can choose to be an angel. Like most trial memberships you've signed up for, you will enter a credit card number. If within the seven day trial period you decide the Freedom Portal is not for you, let us know and you won't be charged. If you're like most people, though, you're going to love what you see, love mixing it up with the other Freedom Portal members, the Thrive On team, and you love getting access to the new subscriber-only content that comes out every month. Thanks for your part in creating a thriving future. Enjoy part two of the show.